Hi, my name's Helen and welcome to my Stories from the Art Room. This is my final episode about Baobu. The ancient Greeks had a name for her skirt lifting, Anna Soromai. And today I would like to show other sculptures and figurines which share her arresting gesture of exposure and can be understood to have a latent power to restore balance and heal stressful and painful situations for women. Some of these images are said to be associated with the desire to enhance fertility and women used to touch them to gain a blessing and some were used as protection to drive out evil spirits. The images of Baobu from Pryrene are a little bit too cutesy or infantilised for me. They had been buried in the ground at Demeter's sanctuary and perhaps the sight of them was restricted only to initiates. I know her face is portrayed as serene and she does come across as both very young and worldly old at the same time, but I prefer these three tiny, complete figure Baobu dancers. They are gold ornaments, which would have been sewn on a garment belonging to a Scythian priestess of Demeter. They were found immersed in the sand in a tomb at Taman in Western Egypt. They date from the late 4th century BC when Hellenistic cities were influenced from Egypt and perhaps being in a far off outpost of Greek culture, they were exempted from the taboo against portraying Baobu. Experts at the British Museum do not, do not believe it's correct to connect standing baobus like this one with other vulva displaying figurines in the manner of the Celtic goddess Sheila Nagig. But like the Medusa Gorgon masks, the Sheila Nagigs had a protective function. Theirs was to guard against evil spirits and it's surprising that in Christian medieval Europe there was such a rich array of sculpted female genitalia displays, some squatting, some hunkering down on haunches like the frog goddesses I mentioned last time. Some are bald or wear elaborate headdresses and all were thought to have the ability to drive out the devil with a potent apotropaic vulva. Many have the classic Anai Soromai gesture and look down from hundreds of medieval buildings across England, Ireland, Wales, Scotland, Western France and Northern Spain. Their architectural location confined to places of power like castles with the majority adorning churches or cathedrals on those stone corbels, which look like stone blocks that jut out like beam ends from exterior walls. It is amazing how these Christian vulva icons survived up to the Victorian period when Sheila gigs were common in and around churches, especially around the fonts. But in the 19th century, they were either removed or defaced. There are Italian sculptures of a woman lifting her gowns in Como and Milan that date from the 12th century. One stood above the the medieval Portatosa gateway into the city and is now in a museum. As you can see in her right hand, she
she holds a dagger placed above her exposed genitalia while her left raises her, sh her, her dress to just above the top of her mons veneris, mound of Venus, while above her head was an archway inscribed with the name Porter. As she stood above uh, a key entranceway into the city. From Italy to India and around the world, this gesture was understood to dispel evil influences. And in history and folklore, women have been lifting their skirts to full effect for centuries in tales of deliberate female genital exposure. I should mention here the medieval grotesques that have no heads with their faces in their stomachs called bleme. This kind of physique was attributed to people in faraway unknown lands. For example, the figure depicted on the outer edge of the Mappa Mundi. But British Museum experts say there is no connection between them and Baobu. This is an 18th century engraving by Charles Eisen for an edition of the book Fables by Jean de La Fontaine. A young woman stands assured and fearless to confront the devil and save her village. Her left hand is on the wall, her right raises her skirt high, displaying her sexual centre to Satan who gasps back in horror. The devil vanquished by vulgar display. The French writer Rabelais's old woman Pape Figure scared the devil in much the same way and was shown uh, on 17th century drinking monks. Baobu represents a potent and long forgotten female-centred image that is very slowly becoming part of our artistic heritage. Her image is a resource, for she offers hope that women might bypass the poisonous appropriation of their genitalia in pornography and be able to reclaim transformative sexual images back through the power of laughing. Let's finish with Balboesque ideas to cheer us up in these difficult times. Babu's spirit lives on in Hotoi, a Japanese Buddhist saint who never uttered a word. He would stand in the marketplace and simply laugh his head off for no reason. And after a while, people watching him started sniggering too then relaxing their inner smiling would vibrate through their bodies as though driving a shuddering dilopy over Pebble Beach. Laughing reduces stress hormone levels, boosts exhilarating endorphins as well as antibody levels. What's more, one hour of internal aerobic giggling could burn 500 calories of Christmas stodge. A lack of salt can dampen your mood. Dance the tango cheek to cheek. It, in, it induces positive emotions and lifts depression. Or a 10 minute brisk walk will enhance well-being. Dispel self-pity with a, a random act of kindness to make a difference give purpose and gain gratification euphoria. Stop frowning and try a smile. It makes you feel happier. Eat chocolate, cheese, bananas and eggs as they all contain tryptophan, an amino acid necessary to the production of serotonin. If you don't have a job, try being a volunteer to help you stay connected and feeling useful. If none of that's any use, you might try watching a short film of the slideshow, which was part of my Master of Arts degree show, with some soothing music. It features a dancing figure doing Tai Chi at Baobu's temple, 
and this will be showing next time. Thanks for watching. Please do post your thoughts below and bye for now.